stitch shifter sewing machine heaven January 12th 2011 I'm here working on my skeleton quilt it's been a while since I've uh, worked on this and uh, given you any updates so uh, let me go over a few of the things here here's my uh, this is my first skull I did embroidery my second one which was a little bit better um, the first one the eyes started puckering all up second one was a little better I didn't do as much third one I did pretty good but by the fourth one I learned about um, stabilizer and that's this sheet here behind the fabric and uh, here's some of it right here this is a called a Pellon 806 stitch and tear and it's like a stiff little paper now you can also use newspaper for this it's not newspaper wouldn't be quite as substantial as this is uh, but you put your fabric underneath here and um, it backs it up when you go to do your embroidery so what I do is I take my pattern I trace in pencil onto my fabric I put the and the fabric is starched and iron so it keeps it kind of flat too and then when you put the the stabilizer on there it keeps it really flat so when you're working in the machine and sliding it around it uh, it stays very flat and doesn't doesn't wrinkle up as, as bad it makes it a lot easier to sew and it if you use a zigzag it keeps it from puckering the the stitches together and getting you that uh, that puckered look like I did here where I ran around and around and around and around the eye and you get a lot of zigzag stitches in there it starts to pull all the fabric together and uh, well here's the first one and what it does is it gives you this wrinkly bumpy look and it makes your your pattern start shrinking and your eye hole which was round will now start start to look like an alien so you the more stitching you do you kind of work against yourself and your pattern starts to deteriorate and get all weird so this one my fourth one the skull here it's got the backing on there and uh, it didn't shrink at all well maybe just a little tiny bit where I did a whole lot of stitching on the eyes but uh, there's ways to cheat with that too I can show you how to use a sharpie and I did some pretty cool zigzag stitching around around the teeth here and that's still kind of a practice one too but uh, I can't get any more of this fabric from Joann's. I don't know why they don't have it anymore. But anyways, that's what I do. I trace that, and I go around here with just a zigzag stitch real quick around the whole thing, and then it starts getting difficult. These bones here, this is probably one of the most difficult uh, pieces that I have to embroider. And what I did was I left the uh, stabilizer in the back of the bones, and I took it from around the edges of the bones. And what you want to do is you want to fold your fabric back under that embroidered edge and sew along there again so your fabric's doubled back because I don't want to have that fray and have that frayed edge showing on my uh, on my finished quilt. Here's the uh, here's the finished foot and this is the quilt top and that is how it's going to look when it's done. It's got a substantial little you know embroidered edge it's embroidered on to the thing so there's a lot of stitch on there it's you know it's pretty stiff you can really feel it and that's what I'm going for but you have to um, embroider this second layer on here and that's what I'm going to show you how to do now let me zoom in a little bit here alright so what I got here is the um, well, I forget the names of them but it's the uh, forearm bones and they when your arms turn like this they're crisscross so that's why they're crisscross like this but what we want to do here is I want to get the fabric folded on the edge and another embroidery seam run down there and so the frayed edge won't uh, stick out and and fray when I get it on here so the all the edges of this foot here were folded under embroidered and then pinned to the top and then ran another embroidery stitch there's like three or four layers of zigzag stitching on that so what I do here is I let me pull this back out so we can take a look at it I take and I fold this back I started down here you can see and I usually start on a really tight 
turn there up on the end of the bone and I'll fold that under and I'll get started like right get my needle up a little bit and of course you modern people get those computer controlled automatic threading machines <laughs> it's because well it's because it's easier I don't do that I don't do easy everything I do ends up being hard and that's why it's good okay so then what you do is you're, you you want to fold your fabric under and you're having your uh, stabilizer in there helps keep this piece stiff so when you go to wrap that under it wrap the the um, fabric wraps underneath that stiff piece pretty good so it's kind of easy to get it started and I have just a very tiny little zigzag um, on this it's maybe just a little more than a sixteenth of an inch wide and I'll let me turn the machine on here we'll get that started okay now after you get going you're gonna see you can kind of see here let me zoom in a little better get some light on this thing too when you're doing the curved parts you can't curve the fold so what you got to do is you got to run a few stitches in and I put the needle in through the fabric on the bone side or on the the finished piece side I lift that presser foot up and I'll roll that fold on the bottom side I can't see what my hands are doing back here what I'll do is I'll pull the fabric on the bottom side over and shift this this way stitch shifter and what that does is it pulls that bottom piece over and makes that that uh, round there so then what you do is you put your presser foot back down take a few more stitches end up on the inside then we'll pull lift that presser foot with the needle down through the material and that holds the holds it in place for that stitch and you put press foot back down. Now, if my bobbin thread catches, it we'll doesn't sound like it's working good, but we'll see here. All right, now I run a couple more stitches, and we're going to run out of stitching room there. So I pull that bottom over, and you can, if your other bone gets in the way, you can just fold that under as far as you need to, just like that there, and uh, you're ready to go. I can. So a little bit more. There we go. So I'll run that down till I run out of folded material there, and then I'll fold that under too. And I can actually fold this whole bone or that whole piece over here on the other X all the way underneath there. And as long as there's at least an eighth of an inch or more in there when I sew that it'll miss that other piece so I'll be able to come back and split those apart and and cut that apart with my scissors you, they got kind of close there you got to make sure you have enough room to put the two folds under there and still have a little room because I want to cut that off so I'll just make sure my fabrics all pulled out of the back there so I don't double sew something and have to go cut that apart very carefully run that around there finish on the inside now I'm gonna to have to fold this piece all the way under and I'm just leaving that little little edge there oh let me show you another little trick I've got here Where did my... okay I have a little bit of trouble getting this video to load uh, this is my other secret this is a six inch uh, upholstery needle it's got an eye it's just a regular needle and I put a little bit of contact cement on the end here so it has a little grip so that you can kind of you know it's got a little friction and what you do is you use this like an awl and you can push and prod your material and since I've already got that lightly embroidered edge on there I can just hold the bottom piece and push that over and hold it like that and use it to aim the piece into the needle just like that and it makes it a lot 
easier and then when oops I see that's rolled over a little too much I run my machine needle down pick that up and you can go underneath and push that back out where you need it and make that piece just almost perfect so the detail that you can achieve with that simple little tool a needle or and all you can use a uh, knitting needle or a piece of wood a bamboo skewer works really well and that allows you to get in there where you can't get your finger oops I don't have my needle down far enough get the needle down through there and that way it holds your piece exactly where your last stitch was and you can get a very very tight detail with that and follow the edge of just about anything I want to get that on the left side and then you just go a few stitches position and we can go in there we can fold that out this way if we need to hold that down and just keep adjusting as you go and you can also use it to push and push the material back and forth as it's going in so you can kind of steer with it too so you don't have to like keep moving your whole piece you can just kind of push right there and it'll nudge that over just a little bit shifts it over stitch shifter oh I'd also like to mention quiltingboard.com which is where I got the idea for this quilt design and they've got a chat there where there's all sorts of really nice people uh, with all sorts of really cool names like uh, Sheep Shed, um, Stitch and Joy, uh, Psycho Nurse, which is one I remember because my girlfriend's a nurse. So uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and a lot of Stitch in Time, I think the, I can't remember them all, but a lot of really nice people there and a lot of, it's a very good resource for ideas and just, uh, you know to go there and chat and about all sorts of stuff and so I would highly recommend you go to quiltingboard.com and register sign up go there and chat I'm there once in a while I'm stitch shifter um, people from all over the country all over the world actually there's people there from Europe and then there's fabrics and trading and you know it's like a little swap shop there's all sorts of interesting stuff going on there all the time and it's all uh, it's not just quilt related a lot, a lot of just different sewing stuff a lot of uh, really creative people there so you might want to try that but that, that's my little trick my little secret just take a needle with a little uh, glue on the end and you can adjust and fold and poke and prod and you know steer your uh, fabric into your compressor a lot easier and it just uh, really makes it a lot easier to go around those those weird edges like that to get that embroidered all in so bye bye